Okay, so I've uh, decided I need more information about this because I cannot understand what's happening. So what I've decided to do is take a look at the 6SN7, which I'm pretty sure is being used to produce the inverted signal that's required for the push-pull output tubes to work. And I've identified, looking at the diagram here, I've identified the two plates. Now, one plate is pin number two. So we just shift this over to pin number two, one, two. Now, here's the weird thing. Pin number two is a plate. And there is a wire that connects it directly to pin number four. Pin number four is one of the grids. So now this is a two-part tube. It's as if there's two tubes here in under one glass envelope. It looks like the plate of one of them is connected directly to the grid of the other. And this strikes me as being really odd. Really odd. But I think what it really tells me is there's something I don't understand here about how you could do that. Because the plate is, has got to have a positive voltage on it. Maybe on this tube the voltage is quite low. I think we measured some 80s and things like that. Maybe that was this too. 80 volts. But that 80 volt positive voltage would be transferred directly to the grid that's connected to it. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If you have a grid running at 80 volts positive, then you've got to get the cathode up to 90 volts positive to maintain that negative relative grid bias. Maybe that's what's going on here. So, in any case, uh, I've identified the two plates, two and five, and then by connecting up my meter to it, I've connected up to two, I can then find out where the wire runs, that's this blue wire, and guess, it, I, I've done this already, so I'll just show you. Right, see, I'm showing you. Isn't that amazing how I can do that? <laughs> That's right. Never mind. Let's go and look at the other plate. Okay, so this is pin five. That's the other plate. One, two, three, four, five. Watch now. These are the two capacitors I replaced that I think are the coupling capacitors. And there you see the uh, the zero and the other one nothing now to get an inverted signal a couple of ways to do it with a tube like this one way is you take a signal off the top of the tube off the plate circuit and a signal off the cathode circuit so if I move the clip lead now let's just double check it's this capacitor not this one okay so this capacitor the signal would pass through it and go to the output tube, one of the two output tubes. The other, uh, look at the, let's look at the cathode. The cathode that's related to 5 to 6. So we get off 5, we go on pin 6. Ah, get on there. Okay, we're on pin 6. Same capacitor, nothing. Other one, there it is. So that tells me that this tube develops a inverted signal, it's a signal that's 180 degrees out of phase with the incoming signal. It then sends the in-phase signal to one capacitor and the out-of-phase signal to the other capacitor and the capacitors feed them onto the two grids of the push-pull. So nothing unusual about that, everything's quite normal. The reason I'm concerned is because this is where the high voltage DC is that needs to be blocked by the capacitors. Seems to be blocked. Unless I'm putting brand new defective capacitors in there and there's like uh, just no chance of that, really. So it really, I'm really stuck. Where is this voltage coming from that's building up on the grids of the output tubes. The mystery continues here.
Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've set the two voltmeters up again to measure the grid voltage on the two output tubes, same as I've done before. And I'm just double checking everything here while I'm talking, and it's rather than let the amplifier charge up the high voltage circuit and see what happens to the grid, I'm going to charge it up with my external power supply. And I'm not going to let you see it on camera, I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing with it. And we'll watch and see if somehow the supply voltage leaks onto these two grids. And why am I doing this? I'm in the hopes that something will show up that will tell me something. Please, somebody, something, tell me. <laughs> Here we go. You see that? I didn't even... I haven't even started up my amp, my uh, power supply. When I first turn it on, there's usually a small discharge. Look at that, it already made it. So I'm going to turn up the power supply now a little bit. And there it's coming through. And going away again. Where would it go? Let me turn it up a little higher. I'm like uh, 40 volts here. One doing one thing and the other one doing something else, which I don't like that. Based on earlier things, they should both be doing the same thing, shouldn't they? Okay, let's take it up higher. We're at, uh, there's 50 volts. What's it doing there? It's jumping around. Okay, let's uh, let's go higher. I'm taking it up to 75 volts. 75 volts. Okay, let's go higher. It's 125 volts now. Well, I'm certainly getting some new information here, but I don't know what to do with it. I noticed the one uh, grid is showing nothing at all. Makes me suspicious about the meter. switch meters for a moment. Turn it up a bit more. Yeah. Wow. I barely moved it and this thing jumped way up. Okay, it's no problem with the meters. We're around 200 volts now. Let me uh, prod around a bit. I have no reason to think it's going to help. the strange things that came to my mind is the charred wood may be conductive. The charred wood may be conductive and may be leaking current through the wood. Um, is that really happening? Gee, I don't know. It's just one of those weird things I thought of. Why does it do that? I 
I do not have the tubes plugged in, the output tubes. And remember, there's a chunk of voltage in here now. It just keeps getting stranger. Yeah, that's great. More information adding to the confusion here. How can this possibly be? Okay, let me turn down the voltage. We'll probably see the uh, grid voltage go the other way. Sure enough, there it goes. Well, I think whatever is causing this effect is the problem. What would cause this effect? I don't know. <laughs> I'm almost at the point where I'm just going to change capacitors willy-nilly. Um, which, I'm, okay, I hear some of you applauding, but I don't like doing that. I like to understand exactly why things are happening. but I don't. So, okay. I'm going to ponder the situation here some more. Okay, so what, what I did, I just took the positive lead of my supply and I'm connecting it to the top of the coupling capacitors to see what goes on. And so I'm, I'm on one of the coupling capacitors and I'll apply some voltage. And keep your eye on this meter, I believe. See, it shows, it shows, it shows. When I stop raising the voltage, though, it drops to zero. So that first indication is just the effect of capacitance charging in that. That's exactly what I would hope for, is zero. Turn it down again, and we'll put it on the other one. Or on this one, look. Now we'll now turn it up, just a little bit. And voila. Somehow, the supply voltage is getting past that capacitor. Wait a minute, it fell back down to zero. Hold on, that's just fine. I keep turning it up over here in case you're wondering why the voltage keeps coming back. It's funny, when I did this off camera, Seems to me I got a different result here. It's a little faster. Let it zero out. And the supply voltage is zero right now. Okay, so I'll turn it up a bit. It goes higher, but still falls to zero. Okay, let me crank it up here. Yeah, that's 100 volts. Falling to zero. But, this is really very odd. Now, if I take that supply voltage, apply it back to the... Oh, let me take my hand off the control. I think I was moving the uh, supply control, yeah. Hands off the control. Supplies at 100 volts. Okay, let me turn it down while I do this next step, which is I'm going to put it back in the power supply here. Oh, scare myself with a spark. And that's why I turned it down. Okay, put it back up to 100 volts. There's 100 volts. That's behaving. No, 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 no. This guy didn't move at all. Why am I finding out here? I'm beating it now. Just beat it, man. Beat it.
And there you have it. A massive confusion here. Um, I th I maybe I'm going to have to take that circuit board and, and, and pull it off and see what's going on behind it. I can see how they've done it though. They, these wires come along and then they're pulled through a brass ring, if you like. There's a brass ring or something like that, a copper ring. And I can see the uh, um, stranded wire that's been pulled up. I assume pulled up tight so underneath the board there is no... Hey, you know what? That's a sandwich. There's a board below the board. So these wires are sandwiched between two boards. So there's no way they can short to the chassis. I've been wondering about that the whole time I've been looking at this. I guess another possibility is that the huge heat that developed down here, maybe it's done something underneath the board I can't see. Some, some wire insulation has melted off. A short circuit has occurred under that board. A couple of connections that are really close together there. But I'm not sure that they should or shouldn't be touching. I'll take a look here. Yeah, that's really one connection. Yeah, it's not two connections close together, it's just one sloppy connection. Partially my fault. Yeah. So if I just put the camera like this, you can see the other board now. That's sandwiching these lead wires. And uh, if you look at the one in the center of the screen, you can see the stranded wire coming through and then the solid wire of the various components attached to it. I remain fully stumped and there's that green wire still hanging out here doing nothing which I'm ignoring for the most part. I, I really can't imagine how that would play a role in the whole scenario. I better turn down my uh, supply here before I forget. I don't know. I think I better go eat a sandwich. Apparently the coffee didn't really do the trick. Look at the difference between those two meters, how they operate. What is going on with that? Wasn't that just positive a moment ago? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, it could be a little voltage leaking out of my supply here, even though I have it on standby. And actually, it's still showing a touch of voltage, so I guess the big power supply capacitors are still charged up a bit. But it's just interesting that the meters really don't behave the same at all, which means the grid circuits on the two output tubes are not behaving the same at all. Yeah. A little bit of protein with some more coffee might do it. You know what would really do it is if I just took all this off my bench and put something else here to work on. That would help. <laughs>